Bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless. And sometimes when I just ask people directly, you know, I ask guys who come in who have a lot of problems with, you know, pornography on, you know, the internet and promiscuous sex and the whole thing, I go, do you have a sexual demon attached to you? And they get really quiet and said, you know, I've really wondered about that for a long, long time. And it's sad because why would that be surprise us? You don't think guys yeah. have demons of greed, demons of pride and ambition, that guys who have serious struggles in the whole sexual realm would have a demon in there, especially people who have had a sexual abuse issue in their life, that that wound seriously affects them. Hi, thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. We're really grateful for the support and can't thank all of you enough for taking the time to watch our videos and hopefully these videos will be helpful to you in your own spiritual warfare. For this video, I'd like to cover a little bit about what Father Chad Ripperger said about demonic infestation. And it's really humbling to know that there's so much we don't know. Now buckle up and let's get on with it. Before I share what Father Ripperger said about demonic infestation, there's something that I came across on the web and I thought it's rather interesting. Apparently, the police in Colombia are using exorcism and prayer to fight crime and cartels. Colombia's chief of police, General Henry Sanabria, said he and other officers have used exorcism and prayer to tackle crime and the country's most powerful criminals, including drug cartel leader Pablo Escobar. He further added that these religious practices have helped the police throughout the last 50 years of armed conflict in the South American country. The police chief claimed that criminals use witchcraft and said in one operation a police officer had been able to kill one of them by praying while shooting. If any of you know a little bit more about this, it'd be interesting to hear from you guys. There's also another article I came across covering what an exorcist was saying, Father Benedict Yi, who explained that not all participants are called to practice deliverance. According to Father Benedict Yi, it's important to note that deliverance and exorcism are two different forms of spiritual intervention. Deliverance is a broad term that refers to being free from any spiritual problem or affliction. On the other hand, exorcism specifically addresses the expulsion of demons. One misconception that arises from this tradition is the belief that any command given to a demon by a baptized Christian in the name of Jesus will be immediately obeyed. The Catholic Church recognizes that the authority to command demons was given to the Twelve Apostles and their successors, and therefore, a priest requires apostolic authority from a bishop before engaging in battle with a demon. The faithful should not use exorcism prayers as a means to test for possession, as these prayers should only be performed by a priest with permission from his bishop. And I think what Father Yi said here during the lecture is the same with what Father Vincent Lampert also said in another video I shared previously. We had a priest come into the Archdiocese of Indianapolis to do an exorcism without the permission of the archbishop. He was doing the exorcism in southern Indiana. The demon manifested, and guess what the demon said to him? Who are you? Who are you? We recognize the authority of the local bishop, but who are you? You have no authority here. We don't have to pay any attention to what you say. He realized he had made an error. He stopped, sought permission of the archbishop, who said, well, you've been working with that person. You can continue, but then he told me to be involved as well. So again, demons are very authoritative, and they also don't have to respond if we are being disobedient or in a state of sin. Anyway, now let's get back to Father Ripperger then. I'm sure some of you are familiar that demonic infestation can affect animals. But to fully appreciate what Father Ripperger is going to say in the short audio clip, I think I'll just share the story of this Indian family who's been experiencing demonic activity around the house for the past year. Zach, the man's name, said that the paranormal activity started when their mate left and the family suspected the mate of performing some form of witchcraft on them. For those who might think the video is fake, I wouldn't want to waste time arguing about that. But I will assume that it's true and hopefully someone who's experiencing something like this at home will listen carefully what Father Ripperger has to say next.
There was a case of a guy's house that was possessed by a demon. Later, we discovered it was a demon of illness that was in the house because the woman that lived before he was there was a witch. And she tried to heal her husband through witchcraft, which just precipitated his death. That's real bright. And then, in the process, the demon of illness got into the house. And so when they, these people moved in, so I said, we need to bless the house. Well, in the meantime, their dog, it was kind of old, but the dog just started getting really ill really quick. And what we found, what I discovered with this demon is he would go after the dog, then he'd go after the next dog, then he, he, was, he was kind of like working up. He would take the lowest on the scale of things. Well, the way we discovered this, too, is as I blessed the house, when I blessed the dog, the next day the dog was fine. Didn't have any symptoms, it wasn't dying anymore. So that's one of the signs that they can actually affect dogs and animals. And they can make animals vicious and that type of thing, although that's not that common. But they can all, so they can also affect inanimate things, such as houses, like if people are engaging in witchcraft or they're performing sinful actions or behaviors in there, it can actually open the door to the demonic influence, suicide, things of this sort are very common, demonic causing demonic influence. So houses can actually become possessed. And this can include everything from just affecting people spiritually, morally, how they feel. It can be just very subtle things. It can also be, it can affect people psychologically. Um, it can affect them emotionally. It can also uh, cause um, difficulties within the family. And also when they get into the house, it can, they can move things around. They can cause things to disappear, then reappear, and things of this sort. They can... They can um, affect people, hurt people, that type of thing. That stuff isn't that common, but getting into the houses is fairly common uh, today. So I always tell people, first of all, don't move next door to a witch. And don't buy a house from a witch. And don't buy, you know, just, and when you move into a place, find out what your neighbors were like and find out what the people were like that you moved into, the house you're moving into, because otherwise you might have to, some problems to clean up. I've made a couple of videos before covering what Father Lampert said about demonic infestation, and it's worth reminding what we should do in case we're experiencing some sort of paranormal activities at home. It's easy to forget that the houses we move into, there were people who lived there before, and this is also true for newly built houses as well. When you move into a new home, as a general recommendation, as a general rule, I always exercise the place because you never know, even if it's a new house, what the construction people have done. I have a relative who moved into a brand new house and the people in the construction had done stuff there and so we're still cleaning up that house spiritually wow. so exercising it and then having the priest bless it when you first move in from the cupboard. Could you please drop? <laughs> Another exorcist, Father John Caro, said as much as well. First of all, have your house blessed. You don't know who was there before you. You don't know what they did in that house. You're walking into an environment that spiritually you don't know if it's been charged, should we say, in a negative, evil way or not. You could take holy water from the church, go through each room and bless the house, asking God's Holy Spirit to descend on the house. Bless the grounds around the house. Bless the garage. Holy water is powerful stuff. I have seen people scream like you hit them with acid. Yet I had a woman who was seriously possessed, and we had her go on retreat. And a nun right next to her was in the retreat room right next to her, and she went in there and blessed the whole retreat room. The next day we found out she slept in the bathroom. I said, Sister, did you bless the bathroom? Yeah, I forgot. Holy water is a very, very powerful thing that you have full access to yes, to bless your house. I travel with it when I stay in hotel rooms. I don't know what people have done in that room before I got there. 
Father Chad Ripperger also shared three ways of getting demons out of a thing, which I think everyone who's experiencing something like this should know about. Um, pillows, mattresses, dolls, uh, animals, and therefore it only indirectly affects man. In this particular case, you actually just exercise the house or the thing over which the demons have possession. If it's something which a hex has been put on, it's better not to exercise it, it's better just to burn it or destroy it. There's three ways of getting demons out of a thing. You do, you do an exorcism, boot them out that way. God has to send an angel or a saint, that's how they get booted out. Or you destroy the thing over which they have possession and then that'll get rid of them. Now even then, sometimes, like for instance in the case, like there's been cases where people have stuff that's made of wood and they'll burn it that's been hexed and so they'll burn it down to, to ash. And then they made the mistake of putting the ash down the toilet. Well, of course, then for years this thing's blocked up and they got all these plumbing problems and you know, all this. So that's why you actually have to take it to a stream and put it in a stream because the stream will dissipate it and then their capacities to affect it. For the last part of this video, there's something that Monsignor Stephen Rossetti shared that's pretty interesting and rather revealing of how demons hate mirror. According to him, in the midst of an exorcism, quite by chance, a mirror ended up in front of the possessed person. Immediately, the demons reacted violently and screamed to get rid of it. Monsignor Rossetti and his team were surprised by the reaction. A former practitioner of sorcery and the occult, said that his religion often hosted underworld parties celebrating particular demons. These demons might take possession of those attending. He said it was common practice to cover the mirrors before the party because the demon spirits could not look at themselves or rather the reflection of the human they possessed that night in the mirrors. When possessing a human being, demons experience some of the physical attributes of the inner human. Even though they do not have a physical body, it seems that when they are possessing a human being and looking into a mirror, they see a glimpse of their horrible evil. As Monsignor Rossetti sometimes say to the demons, God made you beautiful and now look at what you have become. Demons are ugly beyond description. No horror movie can capture the repulsive ugliness of sin and the demonic. Demons do not want to hear the truth and they do not want to see the truth. Their reflection in a mirror shows them their ugly truth. The ritual of an exorcism is about telling the truth to the demons. They have rejected God. They are immersed in evil. Jesus has defeated them on the cross. They are damned for all eternity. They will be in an excruciating torment for all time. Well, that is all for this video. I hope all of you have learned a lot by watching this. Someone commented in one of our videos before saying, we shouldn't be paying too much attention to these exorcists, especially on the demonic. Instead, we should focus on Jesus. I'd like to make it clear that while we do undeniably have to focus on Jesus, and I do have a couple other channels that focus entirely on the Lord, but this channel is dedicated for the subject of spiritual warfare, and we shouldn't be ignorant about the enemy we're facing every single day of our lives. These dark forces will always try to lead us away from God, and if we're ignorant about the type of attacks they throw at us, just like what these exorcists have shared, then wouldn't that make us easy targets? Anyway, before I end this video, I'd like to thank all of you who have donated to my PayPal, supporting our works, as well as those who have joined the membership of this channel. For those of you who are interested to support our works, I left the link to the PayPal in the description box down below. Any contribution is very much appreciated. Well, that's all for now. Again, thanks so much and God bless you.